In this video, we're going to expand a little bit more on the for statement and how to actually I can use loops to start building the basics of you know, basic random chance games. So you might have noticed that I had this code in the previous video. I have actually have uncommented it now so we can actually start playing around with it. So in this case, I have a for loop where I've named my iterator vari uh, variable in this one roll count. The basis of this little, this little simple little game is I'm going to give, I'm going to give my, my action script application here uh, five chances to roll a number six. In this case, it's going to be I'm going to loop, the, loop through this five times. And I'm going to generate a random number anywhere from, uh, anywhere from one to six. And if it gets six, it's then going to say that I won. If it goes through all, all five loops and it doesn't, you know, and it doesn't get a six, it's just going to, just going to end. So let me actually run this, and I'll show you what happens. So in this case, uh, when I ran it this time, I see that I rolled this die four times. In this case, the first time I got a two, then a three, then a one, then a four, and then I got a six. If I it, run it again, you see I got it in the fourth roll. Next one, I got it on the second roll. So you can see how the actual application works, but let me actually explain how the code in the in ActionScript actually uh, is getting this working. So in this case, every time I run this, it's going to loop multiple times um, based on the code that's inside of the curly braces. My for statement, again, has those three major parts that I talked about in the previous video. I'm defining my iterator variable, which in this case is roll count, and I'm initializing that to be zero. The second instance, I'm asking roll count if it's less than five, because I want this to only run five times. If you remember, in the last video, we had it run 10 times. You can modify that to be as whatever, whatever number of times you want it to be. So since it's going to initially be zero, it can be zero, one, two, three, four, which is five times. If I wanted it to roll six times, I could modify this to be roll count is less than six, or I could change it to be roll count is less than or equal to five. Either one would work. The last one is I need to modify my iterator uh, if I want it to uh, if I want it to um, to repeat. Um, so in this case, I'm modifying roll count by adding one using the increment operator. I then am creating a uh, a new variable called roll. And I'm actually assigning, I'm assigning that a random number from 1 to 6. And I'm using the math random method plus the ceiling rounding method as well. And then I'm using the if statement. And I'm asking, is the role, the random number that I created from the previous line, is it equal to 6? If it is equal to 6, I'm going to say, great, you rolled a 6. And you notice the next line is using a new statement called the break statement. The break statement actually exits you out of the loop, regardless if you've actually have, uh, have broken or have, uh, uh, regardless of whether you've met the testing conditions at the top or not. Break will just immediately exit you out of the loop regardless. After the if statement, you'll notice that I'm using an else. So that would mean that if roll does not equal six, it's going to output the line on the else statement. So it's going to say, you didn't roll a six, it, you rolled a and then insert the actual number of the, uh, of the die that was rolled. So that's how I actually am able to get this application to work. I'm using the, the math operator uh, for the random statement and using the rounding functions. And I'm using the if statement to actually test the conditions. And I'm doing this multiple times using the for loop. Once I've met that condition, I'm using the break statement to actually exit me out of the loop and to continue the execution of the code. One thing I just wanted to show you really fast is, um, is what happens if I actually don't increment the operator. So I'm going to modify this so that, uh, so that roll count is going to just be equal to roll count. This is something that can happen um, so mostly accidentally. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run this. And, um, and I'm actually going to remove my, I'm going to actually going to remove these lines from execution. And what I'll have is I'll actually have now a function that will run infinitely because I don't, I don't have any way of having roll count not equal, uh, not equal 5. So in this case, this is an instance of an infinite loop, which you want to avoid at all costs. 
And when you do get this, you're going to actually get an error listed uh, in your output panel that says that a script is executed for longer than expected for 15 seconds. And it actually breaks out of everything. So make sure you avoid infinite loops by always making sure that your testing condition will always eventually become false. So that's, that's everything we're going to cover about for loops. So we're going to continue working more about ActionScript and animation in the next videos.